and welcome to the Comic-Con 2019 vlog. Hey guys, so it is the night before Comic-Con and uh, truth be told, my anxiety is having a field day. Um, I think it's going to be a really intense four days. I'm excited for it. There's a lot of fun stuff, but also there's like all this pressure that I'm trying to let go of because I need to and want to vlog. I want to like get my money's worth because the tickets are kind of expensive and it's just four intense days. And tomorrow, the first part of Thursday, I'm actually going to be there with my youngest kid, which I think is going to be fine. I don't have much scheduled. <sighs> But guys, it's just, it's a lot. Um, so I am going to go have a glass of wine and hang out with my husband and watch something happy. It's going to be great. <laughs> So Jojo, Josiah, is coming with me this morning for a few hours. Are you excited? Yeah. Are we going to go on a trip? Yeah. Where are we going? Tiger and Pimple and Two Pimple and a Doo Doo Doo. Right. Comic Con and Two People, lots of people on the train, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, so I am back from the first day of Comic-Con. Um, I was so tired. I was theoretically going to maybe go to an evening panel, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to evening things tomorrow night and Saturday night. I am just going to give myself a break. So I came home, dropped off books, went and had dinner, caught up on some emails and stuff. Now I am back and um, I'm going to do a haul for you. I think normally I've done separate Comic-Con hauls, but I just like... Things have been so busy. I'm just going to mix it in here. So you're going to get at least a haul from day one, and then you'll probably get another haul Sunday because it's probably going to be busy. I have a lot of things today, and I definitely spent more money than I anticipated, but also have a lot of really exciting books, um, free finished copies that were done as giveaways, and some pretty cool arcs I'm excited about, and merch. So I'm going to get my phone set up so I can show you, and... Um, we will get into the bookish haul. I even bought a mystery box that I have kindly waited to unbox. I have not actually opened it yet, so I'm going to do it on camera. So I'm excited. First, I'm going to show you a few of the things that I purchased um, for reasons, mostly for signings. One is they had this really gorgeous special edition pin for The Beautiful by Renee Audio, which you know I read and love, and it was free with purchase of The Beautiful, which I had already pre-ordered, so they very kindly allowed me to buy a different book by her. 
So there's these new covers of The Wrath of the Dawn, which I did really like this book as well. Um, not my favorite of her covers, like I think I prefer the other ones, but it's fine. It's a paperback. Um, you know, I'm happy to have it. I don't already own it. And really what I was paying for is this beautiful pin, which says until the last star falls from the sky. And then the other thing that I bought that came with a very exciting pin is the newest graphic novel from Victoria Schwab. And she was actually signing these. So this is the Second Shades of Magic graphic novel, The Steel Prince, Knight of Knives. And it was signed by her and the colorist, which was pretty cool. And with purchase, it also came with a pin which is really cool. And if you're wondering, as I was, what it's from, check out The Hilt of His Sword. I think that's what this design is from. So yeah, exclusive for Comic-Con, really, really cool. I also was really excited to purchase this new book by Felicia Day, who I have been a fan of for a really long time. This is Embrace Your Weird, Face Your Fears, and Unleash Creativity. This just came out and um, she was there doing a signing and she signed it and personalized it and um, was super kind I'm getting to meet her uh, for the second time I met her once years ago back when the guild was on which I loved so yeah that was really really cool I have an actual mystery box that I bought but I also bought a mystery bag and this was from Saga Press this is called the check your privilege mystery bag um, this was also actually a really really good deal to be honest it was $26 but then 20% off, so barely over $20, and it was guaranteed to include a new hardcover. Uh, so I'll show you what came in it. I have one more sort of swag collectible item and then three books, and one of them, they very, very kindly allowed me to exchange because I already owned, it came with the first book in a series that I already owned, and so they let me switch it out for the second one, which is uh, Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse, which is really exciting. I don't own this yet. I do have, and I'm not yet read, um, her first book, and this is uh, Adult Urban Fantasy. It is own voices for native representation. I've heard such good things about it. I love the cover. So I got that. Guys, this was such a good deal. I also got a book that I hadn't heard about before, but it sounds really interesting, and it's getting turned into, I think, a show or a movie. This is The Last Adventure of Constance Verity by Ailey Martinez. I think this came out a few years ago. I want to say this is another like urban fantasy. It sounds kind of tongue-in-cheek, like it's going to be really fun, so I'm excited about that one. And then the final book and the hardcover that came in this is Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. And this is actually something I had been interested in reading, and I can't believe this all like came in here. And then the final thing, oh, and you got the tote, obviously, um, but the final thing that came in it was this uh, collectible little food truck from Bodega Boys, De Seuss and Mero, which I guess is a show from Showtime that I have not seen, but that's pretty cool. I, I think, I feel like in terms of value, like that's really good value. So you got the tote bag, the little collectible thing, and all three of these books for like $20, which is pretty dang awesome, so shout out to Saga Press. I have three books that were finished copies as giveaways that I was really happy to have. The first one is a paperback copy of The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This one is a Del Rey book and they were doing a special thing where you took a quiz and based on your picks they recommended a book for you and gave it to you for free and so this was what I ended up with which was pretty cool. I have read this, it's really great, it's like a classic adult epic fantasy, it's very good. And then there were two books that I ended up grabbing from Tor where the author was there doing a signing of books for free which was really awesome. The first one is a paperback copy of The Armored Saint by Mike Cole. I don't know what this one is about but I generally love Tor, and I know I've seen this around. It says it is the first in an epic fantasy series following a woman named Heloise from her humble beginnings to her world-shaping destiny in the story of religious tyrants, arcane war machines, and underground resistance. Um, yeah, so that sounds super awesome. Let me know if you've read this because I think it sounds really great. And the final finished copy I got for my giveaway is Empire of Lies by Raymond Corey. So this I have not actually heard of before, but it sounds super interesting. And the author was pretty cool. He signed it. So it's set in two different time periods, Istanbul in the 1600s and Paris in 2017. So it's kind of like an alternate history slash present. 
where the Ottoman Empire rules things. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. Then I have a whole bunch of arcs. All these arcs, how many is that? Um, seven arcs, and this is just from day one, so that's exciting. Uh, the first one I may actually give away. I originally picked it up because of a friend who I thought might be interested, but I think he already has a copy, which is fine. But maybe I might try it. This is Daughter from the Dark by Marina and Sergei Dyachenko, the authors of Vida Nostra. So this is about fate and a strange child, and they write kind of cerebral, strange things. So um, yeah, maybe I'll check that out. This one is coming out in February, if you guys are interested. Then I have a book that looks really interesting. It's a horror novel that is own voices for native representation. And it is called The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is one that was actually signed. So I got to meet the author. He was really cool. And this sounds really interesting. It says the creeping horror of Paul Tremblay meets Tommy Orange's There There in a dark novel of revenge, cultural identity, and the cost of breaking from tradition. In this latest novel from the Jordan Peele of horror literature, Stephen Graham Jones. So that sounds super interesting. Definitely curious to pick that one up. And this one is going on sale April 7th through Saga Press. Then I have a book that looks like a whole lot of fun. This is another April 2020 release. It's called Girls Save the World in this one by Ash Parsons. This one sounds like so much fun. I think this will be right up my alley. It's about a trio of girls who are best friends who are attending a zombie con, like a convention, but then it turns out that the zombie apocalypse is actually there and they have to save the world. So that sounds hilarious and amazing. Definitely excited for it. I also have a copy of Rogue Princess by B.R. Myers. This is coming out in January of 2020. I love this. It's from Swoon Reads. This is a gender-swapped sci-fi YA retelling of Cinderella. Also, look at her hair. That's amazing. Um, very excited for this. The next arc I picked up is another YA 2020 release. This one is coming out in March. It is the next book from Astrid Schultz called The Vanishing Deep. So this is interesting. It's kind of post-apocalyptic fantasy. I read Four Dead Queens. I had mixed feelings about it, but there were some things about it I really enjoyed. So I'm curious to read more from her. This is her second novel. It's about a girl who was born into a world of water because the great wave swept her world away. And now they had to learn how to survive on the water. But there's ruins and things happen. Sounds super interesting. Then I have an arc that I'm pretty excited about that I picked up from Abrams Books. They are a little bit of a smaller publisher, but sometimes they come out with some really fantastic things. This is coming out in April, and I think it might be a debut, but I'm, don't quote me on that. This is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueco. Look at the cover. It's really cool. They are saying that this is for fans of Sabatir and Tomi Adeyemi, which I am definitely a fan of. This sounds like a really interesting YA fantasy story, and I'm really excited to pick it up, so yeah. Like I said, this one is coming out in April. And the final advanced copy that I picked up today is one that I'm also pretty excited to have. I actually heard about this from Alexa Loves Books. She read it pretty early and absolutely loved it, so I'm very excited to have a copy of this. It is going on sale summer of 2020, so... oh, June? Wow. So yeah, it, like way in advance. This isn't going on sale until June. But this is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. And this is being pitched as Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera, which sounds great. And she said that it is, in fact, pretty dang awesome. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. I have some a bunch of fun swag I picked up. I'm just going to share a few things. One thing I think is kind of funny is they did Chain of Gold Tea Bags. It's English breakfast tea. It's just like English breakfast tea, but with the Cassandra Clare cover on the front. I think it's because it's set in Edwardian England. I just thought that was kind of a clever promotional thing. I also have some pins. I've got one for The Infinite Noise by Lauren Shippen. Look how adorable that pin is. Super cute. And then this one is for Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I actually think I have the pin that came with her first book, so that's kind of cool. I now have both of those. And then I purchased a pin that I just thought was really pretty, and the artist of these pins was like there and doing a signing. Um, look how beautiful that is. She does these gothic queen pins, and I just love that. So I'm going to have to find somewhere to wear it because I just thought that was really pretty, and they were on sale for like ten dollars. <laughs> I told you I spent too much money. And then look at this. These really cool leather bookmarks 
for the new Robert Jordan book that's coming out. I thought that was pretty cool. Then the final other thing that I purchased before I open up the mystery box was at the Jordan Denae booth where they have a lot of different people doing stuff. This is actually from Espionage Cosmetics. They're these nail things. Look, I got these like Slytherin ones. They were $10. And one of the girls was saying they usually last for like a week and a half and I just like I had to get like Slytherin nails. Okay, lastly, I have this mystery box that I bought that I'm really excited to open. So let me go grab that. Okay, so HarperCollins had a bunch of these mystery boxes that they put together and there were several different ones that you could choose from. I ended up going with the Paranormal Romance box, which I'm really excited about. I think this has like three books in it plus swag and it was like $35, which I thought was pretty good. Also, I just really like mystery boxes, guys. Um, so this is a collaboration between Harper Voyager and Avon Books. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. So let's open it and see what's in here. Is it worth it? Here we go. Ooh. So the first thing in here is Dark Challenge by Christine Feehan. I don't know if I even have any of her books on my shelves, but I have not read anything by her. I know that she's really big in paranormal romance. Um, Julian Savage was golden, powerful, but tormented, for the brooding hunter walked alone. This <laughs> is so funny. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously this is definitely, like, for sure paranormal romance. Might have to give that one a try. Sounds like it's going to be super melodramatic. Then we have a book by Kim Harrison, Dead Witch Walking. Love the cover. Looks fun says, in the hollows, the vampires come out to play, and it's always witching hour. A wonderfully fun romp through the supernatural world, a spellbinding blend of sharp wit and vivid imagination. Sounds super fun. I'm down. I have not read anything by her either. Then we have, um, is this an ARC copy? Dime no, it's just a novella. Oh, that's cool. Diamond Fire by Alona Andrews. Okay, this is a hidden legacy novella, so that's kind of cool. I have read one book so far by Alona Andrews and really liked it, and I've been wanting to read more from them, so that's cool. Got a novella. All right, and then there's swag, but also one more book, so let's see what we have. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is a Meg Cabot book, Insatiable. The stakes have never been higher. I have not had the best luck with Meg Cabot, but I have not read any of her paranormal stuff, so I might give this a try. Um, sounds like it could be interesting. It looks like there's definitely a vampire in it. Looks like fun. Cool. And then there's a little bit of swag. Lastly, in the box, we have a fan from Avon. Oh, that's cute. Romance fan. Because you know it's hot, right? And then um, a pocket for the back of your smartphone says, that's what she read. This is from KissCon. So that's cute. It's like a little mobile phone holder. So there you go. Um, so that's everything that came in the box. I mean, I think that's like, okay. I do think that the tote bag that I bought was definitely a better value, but this is pretty cool. And it's all stuff that I didn't already own and and kind of interested in reading. Okay, so there you go. That probably could have been a video on its own. Um, day one, we have a total of 20 books. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I purchased how many of these? Seven came in mystery box slash bags. And then I purchased one graphic novel and two other books and then all of the rest were free. So I definitely bought more this year. But it was super fun. I had a great first day. I am tired now, so I'm going to stop filming and uh, maybe do an Instagram update. And then I'm getting ready for bed. So hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you tomorrow for day two. Hello, and welcome to day two of Comic-Con. Today I am cosplaying as Regan from The Queens of Inneslayer. A little scary, yeah, but one of my favorite books. And, uh... I will insert a couple pictures. Hi there, um, I'm Victoria Schwab. I also write as B.E. Schwab. I write a lot of books about the lines between things, good and evil, hero and villain, human and monster, 
um, magic and mundane, or seemingly mundane. And um, I prefer pronouns are she and her, and I have chosen vengeful, but you can imagine any of my books in that little space. Wonder Woman Bloodlines and it was fantastic so it's like the animated Wonder Woman film and then they talked to some of the people afterwards I changed on my way home and then tomorrow is day three with the hubby date day I am back home and thought I would share with you a few of the things that I picked up today I have some really really exciting arcs some that I knew I wanted uh, one of which is the Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. It's so exciting. Um, this is this is actually coming out March of 2020. The cover is absolutely stunning. This is a historical fantasy novel about Mozart's sister, which is interesting. I didn't know he had a sister, but he does, apparently. I also managed to snag a signed arc of Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. A lot of people are very, very excited about this, and I am hopeful this... Oh, I am really hopeful about it. A lot of people love his work, and this is his first time writing fantasy. I think it's going to be a duology, but I'm not entirely sure, about two brothers, and it's also really pretty, so I got that one signed. And then, um, if you didn't know, there's a very exciting book coming out next year in March, and it's by Marie Rutkowski, the author of The Winner's Curse. Um, so this is called The Midnight Lie. And it is really, really beautiful, and I hear good things about it. So I managed to grab one of those as well, which is super, super exciting. Other things. Penguin did this really cool thing with two authors where they gave away paperback copies of their books, but also they gave you book recommendations. So they signed their books and then asked you questions about what you like to read, and based on what you like, they gave you personalized recommendations. So Shauna McGuire was one of them, and um, I do already have this, so I'll probably give this away to somebody. Um, this is Discount Armageddon. I love her books. And she gave me three personalized book recommendations on this little note card. What a cool thing is that? So really excited because I have not read any of these. And then the other author is Sarah Kuhn, and this is her book Heroin Complex, which looks really fun, and I have not read it. And here are... The ones she gave to me. Um, I had already read Wicked Fox by Cat Cho, so she decided to give me another one, um, which is funny because she gave me Slave to Sensation by Nalini Singh, which I had a lot of people tell me I should read. So yeah, props to Penguin. I think it's a new thing they were trying this year, and I thought that was really cool. Then, um, let's see, I bought one book today. Go me. Only one, guys. Only one. I bought The Monster of Ellenhaven by Jennifer Geisbrecht. I think that's how you say that. I'm not sure. But this is from Tor. I've heard really good things about it. It's like a creepy little kind of novella from Tor.com about like revenge and stuff. And with the purchase, you got a galley and I got this one, which I'm excited for. This is called Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This is a novella that is going on sale in February and it says, the future American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. <laughs> So that sounds super fun. Then um, I got an arc of a book that's coming out in April, which looks interesting. This is called Bonds of Brass 
by Emily Skrutsky, and this is a LGBT sci-fi book that sounds super interesting. And then lastly, um, more diversity here, I didn't know this was a thing, this is called Stealing Thunder by Alina Boyden, um, coming out May 12th, and this is a Own Voices book about a trans princess and dragons. Um, and there's an author's note in here, it sounds really cool, so definitely interested to pick that one up. Um, yeah, and then I have a big stack of graphic novels, which I'm just going to kind of like briefly show you because it's late, so I'm going to like go through all of them, oh my god. Uh. So here you go, these are all of the graphic novels, um, yeah, some that look pretty interesting. This one's based on history. This is a comic introduction to philosophy, so that's fun. This is an adult graphic novel, Open Borders, The Science and Ethics of Immigration. That one is signed. Looks super interesting. This looks gorgeous. Wit Light, Witch Light by Jesse Zabarski. I think a middle grade graphic novel. And uh, so is this. So yeah. Then I did get one other arc, although I think I might give this one away just because it's not my favorite type of thing. It's called Looking Glass by Christina Henry, The Chronicles of Alice novellas. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland retellings, for whatever reason, are not my favorite thing to read, so I may see if somebody else is interested in that. So there you go. Those are all of the books from day two. I am really happy with how it went and um, got to see the Bloodlines Wonder Woman film. That was pretty awesome. Excited for tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. Hello, it is day three, and look who I have with me today. I'm here. It's date day. We're gonna try to make it to the Walking Dead panel today. We'll see if we get in. Wish us luck. <laughs> we made it in. The Russians put the first man on the moon. We thought it was about being first. Hey, do you know who Snoop Dogg is? Oh, you do. Your parents are great. <laughs> so much for being here. I'm very excited. Uh, we're going into the 10th season of Walking Dead. This is crazy. Um, it's Kaylee Fleming! He is son's ponytail today, but as Eugene Josh McDermott! Father Gabriel played by Seth Gilliam!
dinner and maybe take a nap because we're headed out later tonight for a Harry Potter dance party, which should be super exciting. Um, yeah, but it's been in general a really great day. Thank you. that came through because we were on the subway so the noise might have been terrible but like I guys I don't understand so we, we picked this like dance party because it sounded like fun because so we were like oh we're gonna like play through old hits from like the 2000s moving on forward and I was like oh how cool and then we had a DJ who took these like perfectly great <laughs> classic dance songs and mixed them with electronic dance music okay so like I hate electronic dance music which is part of why I picked this after party than the other one and then they mix it in and I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you take a perfectly wonderful dance song and ruin it with, like, with a mix of electronic dance music? I don't understand. It was very frustrating and gave me a headache. Anyway, it's fine. I, I have some quibbles with it, but I'm glad we tried. <laughs> and we had a drink, so it was nice. Um, it was an overpriced drink, but it was a drink. It's all good. Anyway, so now we have some cake and some sparkling water. It's going to be a really exciting night, guys. And uh, we might start replaying Dragon Age, like the first one. I think Dragon Age Origins, is that the first one? Because um, we recently repurchased it because it's now backwards compatible, even though it was an Xbox 360 game. It's now backwards compatible for the Xbox One. So it's going to be an exciting night. And then tomorrow is the last day, day four of Comic-Con. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, it is the last day of Comic-Con. Went with Cozy and Comfy today. So uh, still wearing some Hogwarts and repping my Slytherin house. So headed over there, a little bit of a later start today and it's the last day. So hopefully it'll be a fun time. <laughs> trilogy by Philip Pullman, his Dark Materials. It starts with the Golden Compass. You might remember a movie that, start, that had that name, Unrelated. <laughs> uh, it's being produced by a BBC and HBO together, and BBC is on their game with book-to-film adaptations. She's set to marry King Arthur, but she's not who or what anyone is expecting. She's actually been sent by Merlin to protect Arthur from whatever the evil is, but what is it? And at what cost does she have to do? I am the publicity manager at Four and Four Housing. I'm a dork. I love dad jokes and karaoke, and I'm kind of your go-to girl for every weird thing. I'm going to shout about the books I love a lot here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm a publicist over at Four. is my very small book haul for day three of New York Comic Con. I just wanted to briefly share because last night was busy. Uh, so we have The Return by Rachel Harrison. This is a debut 
horror novel about female friendship and uh, it sounds really interesting. This one goes on sale March 24th. Next from Abrams Kids, we have a finished copy of a middle grade book called The Backstagers and the Ghost Light by The Backstagers and the Ghost Light by Andy Mantis. Uh, this looks super cute. It's like a kind of creepy kids middle grade chapter book and that one is signed by the author. And then lastly, I um, have another arc that looked interesting. Oh, I'm losing a bookmark in there. This is called The Queens of Animation, the untold story of the women who transformed the world of Disney and made cinematic history by Natalia Holt. This is nonfiction. This actually goes on sale the end of October if you guys are interested. And I just am always interested in this, the things of like women behind the scenes. So yeah, not a whole lot of books because I was doing a lot of other things hanging out with my husband but those are the three that I picked up on Saturday. Hey guys so it's definitely much later I just put my kids to bed um but I wanted to hop on here real quick and wrap up this vlog and share with you the things that I picked up at the final day of comic-con and there's actually a lot of books. I did purchase two books today there ended up being a big sale at Macmillan which includes Tor and Fierce Reads and everything was 50% off, which was really, really good. So I did buy two books. I have Rebel by Marie Lu. This is her new standalone book in the legend world. And this was half price, which means it was like $9, which is amazing. And then I also got the collector's edition of um, A Gathering of Shadows by Victoria Schwab. This is absolutely stunning. I'll try to do this while I'm holding it, but I want to share. Um, so this is what it looks like underneath the dust jacket, um, and here's what there's like artwork inside. It's really, really beautiful. And then I have a whole bunch of books that I got for free. Um, the deal was with Macmillan, with purchase, you got one free book. And so I will show you, once I get in through this stack to that, I'll show you what it was. And then all the other things. It is a middle grade arc of Wink by Rob Harrell, Surviving Middle School with One Eye Open. And um, I think this is about a kid who's actually a survivor of eye cancer. Um, so it's supposed to be fun, but also serious. And yeah, it looks like it's probably going to be really good and heartwarming. Um, this is one that's less the sort of thing I'm going to read. So I'm thinking I might pass this on to my friend Katrina from Fabulous Book Scene because I feel like this would be right up her alley. Then one thing they were doing a giveaway of that I just thought was really fun is these Avengers Mad Libs. I love Mad Libs. I can't wait till my kids are old enough to like legit do them because I think they're super fun. This I was so excited for. I went to the tour preview panel and I talked about a lot of books that were exciting, but this one I remember sounding amazing. This is coming out in January of 2020. It's called Burn the Dark by S.A. Hunt. Um, and it says it's a female-driven supernatural meets Stranger Things, a horror action adventure about a punk YouTuber on her mission to bring down evil witches one vid at a time. I am so excited for this, guys. I think it's going to be really, really fun. They also were giving away mass market paperback copies of Alphabet Squadron, a Star Wars novel by Alexander Freed, which is exciting. These are things that I like aspire to read more of. Um, Kristen from Super Space Chick is amazing and has like a whole video talking about how to read them. So I've been kind of collecting some of the Star Wars books and eventually I do really want to read them. So picked that up. Sorry, my room is getting tired. I really should just like put this on a tripod, but it's too much work. So I'm not doing that. <laughs> Then I have another arc. This is Mazes of Power by Juliet Wade going on sale in February 4th. And it says that this one is a debut work of sociological science fiction following a deadly battle for succession where brother is pitted against brother in a singular chance to win power and influence from their family. So that's interesting. We also have a signed paperback copy of The Way of the Shield by Marshall Ryan Maresca. He was signing... I don't actually know exactly what this is about, but I know it's some kind of fantasy. And I generally like fantasy, so that's cool. Another fantasy book that I got a paperback copy of, not signed, but this is A Plague of Giants by Kevin Hearn. Um, it's an epic fantasy about giants and people that sound really interesting, so curious to check that one out. Then the book that came free with purchase for Macmillan was a copy of The Darkest Star by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have already read this. The sequel's coming out soon. I had an arc of this, and I did really enjoy it. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. Um, I may pass it on to somebody else, but I'm still pretty happy to have it, so that was cool. Then another arc that looks exciting is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, the author of Station Eleven. This is her next book coming out in March. It's about a massive Ponzi scheme collapse and the mysterious disappearance of a woman from the deck of a ship at sea. 
Um, so definitely maybe different from the other one, but sounds interesting. <laughs> I'll have another middle grade book. This is Gloomtown by Ronald L. Smith. I adore the cover of this book. It looks so cool. It's coming out in February. And it's about a 12-year-old who applies for a job at a spooky mansion, and I don't know. This I just like barely started reading. It's super interesting. The Mother Code by Carol Stiver is coming out May 5th. And this one is about a future where the human race is about to be gone. And so they develop these robots to carry human fetuses and then raise them like mothers. So it's about like, what does it mean to be a mother? Which sounds like super interesting. And then lastly, I have a copy of Havenfall by Sarah Holland, the author of Timeless. This is the first in her newest series, some kind of a fantasy series. I don't know exactly what it's about, but it looks beautiful and um, I'm excited about it. It is coming out March 3rd. The last thing I wanted to share is I did pick up a wallet from Loungefly. They make beautiful, be like beautiful, drool-worthy fandom uh, like wallets and purses and backpacks and they're expensive so I just got a wallet so I'm gonna show you. Alright so here's the bag lounge fly if you guys want to check them out I'm telling you they have so many just like stunning things I have not actually even like opened this oh my gosh it's so pretty so this is a Star Wars wallet open this it looks like polka dots but it's actually the Death Star. Oh my goodness, look how pretty. And then when you open it up, look at that lining. I love it so much. So there you have it. That is everything from the final day of Comic-Con. In general, I had a really, really fantastic time. Um, today was some really interesting panels about upcoming releases from different imprints, and that was a lot of what I was paying attention to. So I've got a few things on my radar for 2020 that I'm pretty excited about, and now I need to like go organize all my books because there's a lot of them, and I have not done much reading. So hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Talk to me in the comments down below, and let me know if you guys have ever gone to a Comic-Con. Have you ever wanted to go? It's pretty intense, but I always enjoy it. And uh, let's just make that your question of the day. Have you gone to Comic-Con? Do you want to, or does it sound terrible to you? Let me know. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.